This webinar will go over progress reporting for EMPG 2017 specifically. To complete any progress reports, you need to be at the project level. The project 2017 for EMPG. And along the left hand tab, you can scroll down to progress monitoring and select quarterly reports. You should see a list of currently in the month of August, you'll just see quarter three, April through June. The 1st of September, you will see a 2017 Q4 for July through September. As you have noted in your grant terms and conditions, page 11 of 12, for 2017, Due to the timing of the federal award being in August of 2017, subrecipients may opt to submit one progress report for the entire year's activity, October 1st through September 30th. If you're choosing to do the one report with one reimbursement request, you will need to wait until after that, after September 30th, so you can document. Uh, all the activity in its entirety. If you're choosing to submit two progress reports and two reimbursement requests, the first activity will be for October 1st through June 30th, and that is due September 15th. And then another progress report for activity July through September due October 30th. So right now, if you were to click on quarter three and you're wanting to do this report for October through June's activity, you can select that. And as it circles, it'll take you to the actual quarterly report. It'll say 2017 Q3. It'll say April through June, but for 2017 EMPG, we know that this is October through June. From here, the tabs along the left, you'll want to come down here and select Form. Once you select Form, there'll be information here for you to complete. If this is your last quarterly report, it says if this project is 100% complete, a project closeout is required, create new. Please, for EMPG, disregard the statement and the link. This is not a requirement for EMPG. So disregard that note right there. Keep scrolling down. Current percent complete. So again, if this is your quarter three, which is covering October through June, likely you would be 75% complete. If it's your quarter four and you're doing it for the entire year, it would of course be 100%. You know the percent complete best. Total funds expended to date, and that's the date uh, would be June 30th. Anticipated final amount. What at the end of the at the end of September 30th, what do you anticipate the total amount of the project costing? Anticipated completion date, that too would be likely 9-30-2017. There are a few exceptions. You know who you would be and what you would put in there. That would be the end of the ex anticipated um, performance period. Program income likely zero. Please contact me if you did in fact incur program income based on the applications. No applicant anticipated to incur program income. Interest earned. Likely since this is a reimbursement grant, there was no interest earned. This is the projected funds to be requested for the remaining time of the period of performance, July through September. So if this is Total funds expended to date, anticipated final amount, what's the difference? I anticipate to spend that much more in the next three months, July through September. Scrolling down, you get to the objectives and action steps. This is taken directly from 
your application, where we asked you to be specific about the objectives, the start and end dates of the objectives, and specifically the action steps, usually two action steps per quarter. And this is where you would put the status of that activity. Options there, identify based on update schedule and need which ESFs will be updated for this year. Well, did you do that in October through December? If you did, you can say completed, identified, ESFs 1, 2, and 3, or whichever ESFs you identified. You get the idea of going down through and putting the status of each of these items. I encourage you, though, to not just put completed. Um, be specific about what actually occurred. So schedule meetings with stakeholders for review and input of applicable ESF updates scheduled X number of meetings, four meetings for the following quarter with stakeholders, with 10 stakeholders or organizations. So that's what I say, what I mean when I'm saying be specific about what actually occurred. So you'll complete that. For activity that has not yet occurred, if you have not distributed the updated ESFs to the partners, then here you can say activity planned for next quarter. And this one, since no, acti no further activity was planned, this one could be not applicable. Down in the comments box, this section is specific for identifying any challenges or delays that you experienced and also providing a summary of outputs and outcomes. Specifically, if this is your quarter four or your, if it's not even your quarter four, but it is your final report. If it is your final report, then this needs to be your year-end summary that goes over in 6,000 characters or less what you would put in a newspaper article for the public describing what was accomplished with EMPG funds and why the activity was important, what benefit the activity had. So that's what you're going to put in here. So that's what would go into the comment section. Then you would scroll down and click the submission content, and it's not going to let me Now it should say, I agree, information entered in this form is accurate. And you can scroll up and the save button is going to be right here. Throughout the system, it's usually up on the top left, but in this case, it's right at the top of the form of the quarterly report. So click Save Changes. And then you would click Advance or Submit, whatever option is available to you. and you are done with your quarterly report.